Emily Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and joining me today is Jeff Leach. He's an online fitness coach and he's also vegan. How are you? Yeah, good thanks. That's good. And tell me what's an online vegan fitness coach mean? Um, so basically I have an online business. I've got a website where people can purchase plans and things like that um, and get advice and, and tips and sort of try and lead by example with what I do and inspire others. Yeah. Yeah. And so how long have you been vegan for? Uh, it's just about to be two years. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. And we were just talking before about the differences or whether you should use the word vegan or plant-based. What yeah. would you suggest to people that are starting with their own plant-based um, business? Yeah. Yeah. Um, initially, I, I always used plant-based as, mm. as my sort of motto or slogan for what I was doing. Um, now I'm not so phased either way. Yeah. Um, I know a few other people and myself had got some some um, negative feedback, I suppose, yeah. by using the word vegan at times, mm -hmm. but that sort of thing. Now it doesn't even really matter. And it is it negative way. feedback from people who are vegan or who aren't vegan? People who aren't. Okay, <laughs> yeah. wow. So just trolls, I guess. Basically, yeah. yeah. Okay. You sort of learn that you're going to get that no matter what you're doing. Mm. So yeah. just do what you believe in and, and ignore yeah. the naysayers. The rest, uh, yeah. And I guess like if you use the term plant-based too, you know, veganism is more than just about food or what you do and yes. don't eat. So yeah. then that's sort of covering a bit of a wider basis and maybe people yeah. are a bit easier to adopt that or yeah. go forward. Yeah, probably. I think um, when you do speak about being plant-based, it specifically does just refer to the diet side of yeah. things, like what you consume um, and not the rest of the vegan movement. So. Yeah. Yeah, it is probably a portion of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, why did you go vegan in the first place? Um, so there are a few reasons initially. Yep. Um, obviously, um, my partner was vegan and mm -hmm. I had a few friends who had been as well. Yep. Um, and one in particular who had used vegan diet to fix a few health issues that mm -hmm. he had. Um, and that sort of inspired me to think, well, there's more to this than, than just choosing to eat a particular way. Yeah. Um, so I started doing a lot of research and um, just decided that I'd give it a go. Mm -hmm. And just one day was a meat eater, the next day was not. Yeah. And just oh, went from good. there. Yeah. So didn't ease into it or anything. Yeah. I just thought, uh, initially I sort of thought it might just be, you know, a couple of months, a bit of an experiment. Yeah. But then obviously once I started doing it, mm -hmm you feel better yeah. you want to keep going so can't go back <laughs> no and then obviously as you you get into it all of the the bigger picture starts yeah. to become more uh you're more aware of that yeah like the go. ethical elements yeah the ethical yeah. considerations and yeah. environmental considerations yeah. and all of those things mm -hmm. um start watching a bit more and reading mm -hmm. more and yeah there's no going back mm -hmm. cool and um so your background is um in training so you're a personal trainer yes and you're also a firefighter yep, yep. um how do you work all that together um so full-time i'm a firefighter yep. um and my roster at the moment is a couple of days on and four days off mm -hmm. so that gives me the time to manage my other business yeah um and you know there there's times when i can do bits and pieces for my business while i'm on the station anyway so i have a fair bit of downtime yep. but if i did wasn't doing that i don't know what i'd be doing yeah, so, get bored, hey? yeah that's right <laughs> so between my own my own fitness mm -hmm. um working business family social life all yep. of those things i like to keep busy so mm -hmm. yeah so if someone went to you and they said hey jeff i'm thinking about being plant-based or i want to mm -hmm. look into being vegan i want to be fit like you yep. what would be the first sort of thing that you, you would say to someone just a like a mainstream type eater and yeah um it depends like some people like, i get that question all the time like even just yesterday i had a few people message me all at the same time mm -hmm. asking the same thing oh, are wow. oh, we interested in maybe doing it have you got any suggestions mm -hmm. um and, and it's a range of people like from who some people want to do it for ethical reasons so they want to do it straight away and they don't want to ease into it and then other people it's more about their health and well-being mm -hmm. so they, they're probably the people who are more inclined to just go I want to cut back mm. my meat consumption first and then or they want to go vegetarian first mm -hmm. and then transition into being a full vegan yep. so it's really varied what you're going to get um, and it depends on that individual what advice you're going to give them but any steps forward towards 
um, less meat and less animal products is good in my opinion, so I'll always cool. encourage it and yeah. help them along. And so, um, do you put them on programs or do you exercise with them or train with them? What's your... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't do any hands-on coaching with people. Mm -hmm. um, it's all via email or online. Yeah. Um, and you know, they have 24-hour access for my oh, clients, yeah. so I get yeah. emails all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's... Typically, they'll buy a plan and then if we need to tweak it to fit them specifically, we can do that. Um, but yeah, they just, you know, the, the way I've set it up is it's a bit of a educational tool. Mm -hmm. So the pack isn't just a, this is your meal plan and that's yeah. your training plan. Like yeah. it's actually like, you know, a hundred plus page document that they oh, get. Wow. Yeah. Teaching them about why they're going to be eating that way and training that way and how to do it. So mm -hmm. trying to set them up so when the time frame for that is over, mm -hmm. they're going to be able to continue themselves, not just leave them in the lurch yeah. for, oh, what do I do now? Yeah. And what would you, do you have like 12 week plans, 8 week plans, like what, is yeah, there, I've got, do you time, is yeah, it time specific? They are time specific and yeah. that's more just to get them to commit yeah. for that length of time at the start. So once you got someone where that has become a habit for them now, you know, they'll continue on. So. My beginner and intermediate plans are eight weeks, mm -hmm. and then I have an advanced plan which is twelve weeks. Okay. Um, and they're they're just a time frame, you know. Like many of my clients continue doing pretty much essentially what's in the plan anyway, yeah. long term. And would they come to you to do um, like to compete in something, or would most people just come to you for a bit of a health reboot or a fitness reboot? Yeah, it's interesting. I don't. Um, I don't. Um, advertise myself as a as a coach for competitions. Yeah. Um, I've competed in the past myself, and I've had clients that have done that. Yeah. It's not really a specialty. Mm -hmm. um, I'm more of my coaching is about the health side of it, mm -hmm. not to be healthy. So yeah. it's not really about you know like a really short term goal. They're more about long term yeah. goals. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so with the people that come to you, do you have what's the success rate? Um, really good. Yeah. Like everyone will get a result mm -hmm. that is, you know, huge difference from where they've been in the past. Mm -hmm. Even on the, um, the advanced plans, you know, these are people who have been training for a while. They know a bit about nutrition themselves already, mm -hmm. um, but they're just looking for that next step. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're training, you know, you tend to hit plateaus and you get stuck for a while because you know if you if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always had. Yeah. So. I like that quote. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're looking for something else and, and more information and continual learning like I'm always learning myself and mm. take advice from people that I find inspirational along the way as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's a part of that. Cool. And um, what questions do you get asked the most? Um, you could probably <laughs> pin it down to one. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you get your protein, yeah, Jack? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely... You'll always get that from, yeah. like, as an athlete, especially. Um, so, what's a good way to respond to people when you get that? Especially, like, well, you could flex your muscles, I guess, couldn't you? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> um, you know, so I've, I've been vegan now for two, nearly two years and I haven't lost any muscle mass, yeah. I haven't lost any density, or actually gained muscle mass in that oh. time. Oh. Um, so, and, you know, I know plenty of other guys as well who are vegans and athletes. And, mm -hmm. They're the same. So there's obviously no issue there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you just need to re-educate yourself in in how you're going to structure your meal plans mm. um, and how you eat on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. with new ingredients. So yeah. it's just it's learning. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I always say there's protein in everything. Mm. It just depends on how much you want to eat. And one of the advantages of eating a vegan diet is that instead of eating this much food in a day, you get to mm. eat this much. <laughs> Which is great, because I love eating. <laughs> Why not? So, um, talking still about protein, what would yeah. you have, what's your sort of average um, daily meals that would give someone high protein? Yeah, there's there's plenty of things, you know, like, um, I like to sort of combine foods rather than just focus on one type of food. So, try not to eat the same thing every day, mix yeah. it up. Obviously, for like a, a short-term goal, like if I wanted to get a bit leaner for a photo shoot or something, mm -hmm. you know, I might just stick with one type of food for a, a short period of time, definitely not long term doing that. Um, but things like lentils and chickpeas, tempeh, mm -hmm. tofu, all of those things um, 
Satan, I don't know. Satan. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds weird to say it that way. <laughs> I always get it wrong. But all of those things are great protein sources. Um, and I use this example all the time with people. I go, well, there's more protein per calorie in broccoli mm -hmm. than in red meat. Mm. So, like, if you're talking, you know, if you're watching how many calories you eat in a day, yeah. well, you're going to get more out of plant-based food per, you know, calorie density mm. of the food itself than out of meat anyway. Mm. Yeah. That's good. And from your background with your personal training, do you see that, that a lot of people can even believe that or do you still see there's a bit of a backlash between vegans can get enough protein, vegans can be fit, vegans can be healthy? Yeah, well I think um, it's, it's sort of becoming a lot more accepted now and people are seeing a lot more vegan athletes out there mm. and realising that hey, these guys aren't skinny, sickly looking people yeah. and they're quite healthy so there has to be a way to do it yeah. in, a, in a healthy manner <laughs> and you know, that's I think it is being more accepted now and you know part of leading by example for that mm. I guess it's just all the like stuff that people have learned years ago that keeps being yeah. retrained or re-spoken to people yeah. and you just keep perpetuating those non-vegan myths I guess that's right vegan yeah myths and... we know it's, like, it's it's big business like mm. people yeah. people have created their livelihoods around us consuming whatever it is that they're producing, yeah, you know, if, whether that's milk or a meat product or whatever that is, they're not going to want to change that status quo. Mm. That that's you know, everyone believes that animal-based protein is better mm. when it's not. Like yeah. there's an amino acid is an amino acid whether it comes from an animal product or a plant product. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. So there's no real difference scientifically. There's plenty of plant-based foods that have the whole chain of amino acids mm -hmm. that we need to form proteins. And there's no reason why we should be continuing to perpetuate the myth that animal products are better. Yeah, exactly. And um, I guess one of the things would be a lot of bodybuilders or personal trainers and stuff like that have a lot of protein, like high um, in protein powders and stuff like yeah. that. And I see you repping our, our mate Billy's yep. Prana On <laughs> brand. <laughs> So that's a really good example of how you can get your protein powders from a vegan plant-based business. Well, that, that's right. You know, that's it's a, an ethical business that mm -hmm. provides good quality products that are mostly organic and a hundred percent plant-based, and it just goes and to show. And they taste good too. They taste amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I think in the past, you know, there were a lot of plant-based proteins that were pretty terrible. Mm. Um, that's not the case anymore. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely not a reason not to do it anymore. Um, and you know those products are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Make sure you check out um, Jeff's website, jeffleachfit.com. Yep. And you can find his programs. Follow him um, with what he's up to on social media. And thanks for joining us today. No thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for watching, and make sure you check out vivalavegan.net for more interviews with inspiring vegans.